Just over a week ago, on March 31st, a remarkable woman passed away. She was over 102 years old when she died, and her name was Hoàng Thị Khin. She lived an amazing life of bravery and sacrifice, and in memory of her contributions to the people of Vietnam and to the workers of the world, I would like to tell you more about her now. Hoàng Thị Khin was a member of Nung people, one of the 54 ethnic minorities of Vietnam. The Nung mostly live in mountainous areas in northern Vietnam with a present-day population of about 100,000. The Nung joined the Communist Revolution of Vietnam very early, while Vietnam was occupied by fascist Japan in the 1940s. And Hoàng Thị Khin was from the start fighting against colonialism and imperialist oppression right alongside Ho Chi Minh. An inspiring example example of solidarity between different ethnicities in Vietnam in our revolutionary struggle against the mighty empires of France, Japan, and the USA. We begin our story with a little background about the origins of revolution in Vietnam. It's 1941, and Ho Chi Minh has finally returned to Vietnam after 30 years of world travel and 14 months locked up in one of Chiang Kai-shek's brutal prisons in China. As soon as he arrived back home, Ho Chi Minh immediately began planning for the Communist Revolution to save Vietnam from slavery, fascism, and colonialism. Through 30 years of tireless efforts overseas, Ho Chi Minh had gained a global reputation as a very famous revolutionist. And the French colonialist government of Vietnam knew that he would eventually try to return home, so they expended a lot of energy and effort to spy on Ho Chi Minh and his revolutionary comrades to stop them from entering Vietnam. Countless spies and police and soldiers were dispatched to our borders and city centers to search for Ho Chi Minh and other revolutionary figures. They also bought off collaborators and comradors using money and food to get Vietnamese citizens to act as agents and informants. And remember that this was a time of severe famine and the Vietnamese were very hungry and needy. So these bribes were a particularly insidious method to dividing and conquering colonial subjects and they were very effective. In fact, during the 1930s, Ho Chi Minh tried to enter Vietnam twice, but his attempts failed both times due to paid informants and spies. That's why, in February of 1941, Ho Chi Minh and a group of Vietnamese and Chinese communists had to secretly walk through wild and mountainous jungles from China to Vietnam. It was a dangerous and difficult journey, and when they came to Cao Bang, a province right on the border of Vietnam and China, they decided to establish their first communist base right there. Because of the untamed jungles and rugged mountainous terrain, the geography of Cao Bang was extremely dangerous for people who were not born there. It would be really hard for the French colonialist government to capture anyone in such a secluded and remote mountainous area, which made it a great place to hide. The primary requirement of the revolution at this time was secrecy, and so Ho Chi Minh and his comrades chose to live in a cave called Bắc Bó, located deep in the jungle of Cao Bang. Ho Chi Minh lived in Bắc Bó cave in Cao Bang for years and had to endure terrible living conditions. To give you a better idea, Ho Chi Minh, the world-famous revolutionary leader, had nothing to sleep on but a piece of wood. His daily food was mostly just corn and some salt, which was donated by ethnic villagers, as well as bamboo shoots he and his comrades scavenged in the jungles. Even in those dangerous, secretive earliest days, thousands of ethnic minority people supported Ho Chi Minh and the Communist Revolution despite the fact that they would face execution if the French colonialists found out about them. It's hard to describe how we Vietnamese socialists feel about this history of collaboration. But I can say that I think about the risks that our various different peoples took for each other in uniting together against colonial oppressors with a sacred sense of gratitude and awe. I will always be thankful to the ethnic minorities who risked and sacrificed their lives so that all of us collectively could be free. Which brings us back to Hoàng Thị Khin, the Nung woman who is the main subject of this video. Hoàng Thị Khin was born in Park Bo Village in Cao Bang Province in 1920. Ho Chi Minh first came to Park Bo Village in 1941 when Hoàng Thị Khin was just 21 years old. Everyone in Park Bo Village decided to follow and support the revolutionary struggle of Ho Chi Minh, and Hoàng Thị Khin immediately signed up to become a cook for the fledgling communist cadre which, at the time, consisted of only about 10 communist revolutionaries. 
At first, Huang Dikin would simply cook food for the revolutionaries whenever they came to stay in her tiny village, which consisted of only about 20 huts deep in the jungle. And each of the 20 families who lived in those huts was very, very poor. Only one road led in and out of the village, which made it very easy to keep a watch and alert the whole family whenever the enemy came near. Whenever any villagers saw enemies approaching the village, they would scream, Pigs are now in the garden! Or, Buffaloes are now in the garden! It sounded like normal talk between farmers, but actually, these were communist codes to alert comrades to take measures to conceal any revolutionary activity that was taking place. Park Pao village was extremely poor, but Huang Thikhin and her people were always ready to sacrifice everything, including their own lives, to help the revolution. After a few months, French colonialists came to suspect Park Pao village of harboring communists. So, in order to protect the villagers, Ho Chi Minh and his comrades decided to move back out to the jungle and to live in total secrecy. Around that same time, a lumberjack found a secret cave next to a stream when he was looking for wood to cut. He introduced this cave to Ho Chi Minh. They decided to name the cave Park Bo after Huang Thi Khin's village. Ho Chi Minh and his comrades moved into Park Bo cave and Huang Thi Khin, along with other villagers, would secretly bring them food every day. To avoid the spies of colonialist France, Huang Thi Khin had to hide the food in bamboo tubes and walk through the jungles as though she were just a normal farmer looking for wild veggies. She faced danger and threats from the French government nearly every single day. After years of hard living in Park Po Cave, Ho Chi Minh and his comrades finally left when they realized that the Japanese were losing World War II. They decided to take advantage of the situation by quickly mobilizing across Vietnam and managed to pull off a successful communist revolution in August 1945, when Vietnam finally officially gained our independence. But the French were dead set on holding on to Vietnam, and they immediately came back to reclaim their colony of so-called Indochina once more to make up for their losses in World War II. And so, for nine long years, from 1946 to 1954, Vietnam had to fight to completely defeat French colonialism. During this time, Huang Thi Khin served as a courier, risking her life to deliver messages in secret for Viet Minh communist forces. After we won the resistance war against the French in 1954, Huang Thi started working for her local government. She became the leader of the women's union in her village and also led the agriculture cooperative in her district. Huang Thi was 45 years old when the USA started its imperialist war against Vietnam in 1965, and she served her village and managed to survive all through that horrible war and then went on to live a long and happy life in further service to her village in peacetime, right up until her death on March 31st. All through her life, even as she suffered from Alzheimer's disease, she never forgot her memories of Ho Chi Minh and the communist revolutionaries who lived in her village. Huang Thi Khin's death is a tragic loss for all Vietnamese people, but we will make sure that we will never forget her and her stories. We Vietnamese of all ethnicities, we try our best to protect our revolution in memory of Huang Thi Khin and to keep building up Vietnam as a strong and rich country following the socialist path. I will end my video with a story from Huang Thi Khin. Uncle Ho spoke our known language with a warm voice. He introduced himself as Thu, and he told us to call him Zha Thu. Zha Thu kindly talked to the villagers. Da Thu also advised, If the old and young, girls and boys of Tai, Nung, Hmong, Zhao peoples from everywhere gather together, learn to read and write, and made a revolution, we will drive away the colonialists and win the war. We will be independent, free, and happy. Zha Thu's words were like a fire that warmed my heart. Returning home, I told my father about Zatu's words. My father was very happy and told me to listen to Zatu's words and encouraged the villagers to join the communist forces and to make revolution. Rest in peace, Comrade Huang Thi Khin, and thank you so much for your long life of service and sacrifice. Hi everyone, I just want to thank all my supporters on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and my comrades on Comradery.co. You are the reason I can make these videos, so thank you so much. If you want to support this channel, see the links in the description, or you can click like or share the video, that helps a lot too. And if you aren't already, be sure to subscribe!
थैंक यू सो मच एंड बाय बाय